take long at all. I think I found them. It's a pretty one. Same size as the last one. There mm. you go. Let's see if I can't replicate that. I talon down. So we came into this little flat and we happened to start seeing bluegills around, but if you can pan over to your right, you can see a few of these scattered um, bulrushes. They're broken off from the, from the ice, but I'm just taking it and pitching my bobber right up alongside, oh, right, in, right there, just like that. That's where they want to be, up tight into those bluegill, or up tight into those bulrushes. There we go. Yeah, geez, that's another big one. Holy cow. That's another really beautiful bluegill with some shoulders on them. Big old hump head on them, just like that. See that little spade grub right there? Stuck right in the corner of his kisser. Right there. There it is. So that's the little sliding bobber system that I'm using. You know, I really love having my jig and my bobber come right down to right down together. Like I said before, you can cast it a long way. It's very accurate and it's super simple. You know, I have a bead, a bobber stop, and I can adjust that very easily where I need to. But right now, they're about a foot, foot and a half down. And we have them pretty well pegged as to where they are. They just wanna be in those in those bulrushes, whatever's left of those bulrushes. There we go. This feels like another nice one. Not bad, not like the other ones, but they're not all giants, right? But it's certainly a good amount of action. But that's already three, three fish three, four fish maybe on that little tail. And it's still, it's rock solid. I mean, you, I just, I'd be curious to know how many bull bluegills a guy can catch on one. Cause it's, it's a tough little bait. And they eat it. They eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, not bad. The whole concept to this is keeping the jig and the bobber collapsed on each other. You know, you can kind of use the dock shooting method if you want, but I just usually take it and just do like a little underhand flip. But if you're wanting to cover a lot of water, or get it out extra far, you know, you can crank back and you can send it. You know, that's a long cast. That's out by that dead tree. You know, if I had a split shot on here, which I don't need because it's a lead head jig, but if I had a split shot right here, like you normally would if you're live bait rigging, you know, then you have this much line just hanging, free floating in the wind as you cast. So it's really beneficial to keep your bobber and your jig together. You can get a lot of distance out of your cast and you can make pinpoint accurate casts to the little emergent vegetation that's here and it doesn't get wrapped around bulrushes or any of the cover that you're dealing with. Yep, instantly. I'm gonna go over you. That's a big one. Wow, that's a nice one. Really, pound for pound there. Some of the toughest bluegills that I've ever come <laughs> That makes me happy. It makes me really happy. Look at the size of that thing. It's a big, beautiful bluegill. And that bull-headed bluegill. There, there we go. That is so sweet. I love it.
10 inches. It's a 10 inch bluegill. If you're a bass fisherman, you know all about this bobber stop. This is what would peg your tungsten to your Texas rig if you're running a peg system, but but it's really easy to adjust and I'm not I'm not using knots or anything. It's just really simple adjustment just by sliding it up and down your line. You have a bead. The bead is very crucial. You don't want to forget your bead, otherwise your bobber stop will suck through your bobber sometimes and that's just headaches. And then the bobber of your liking. This is just a good little high vis bobber. It's got a weight on the bottom. That tungsten butts right up against the bobber and it's all one unit and that's what you're casting right there. It's collapsed all together and you can sail it. So this is a 7-1. It's, you know, it's a pretty slow action rod. I don't want anything really fast. I have it paired with braid. The braid helps me cast a long way. And then because I'm around a little bit of emergent vegetation, I do have a six pound fluorocarbon leader on here. So if I do get wound up, you know, I have a little bit of horsepower to get them out, but I'm using the bobber stop right here. And this is, uh, this is really important. You know, the fish are just starting to move up. They came from deep, you know, a month ago, I could have went down way deeper, but in another month from now, you know, midsummer, those fish are going to slide out of the shallows and it's just a good system to cover shallow water to deep water with using the same rod and reel. And it works great for crappies, you know, walleyes. There's a lot of different fish you can catch under a cork. We're gonna have all the lily pads chopped off. <laughs> Doing some gardening. Oh, the fish we all grew up on, the bluegill. That's that little tungsten tubby jig on there. It's a good little panfish bait in the winter and in the summer. Still to this day, for me, it doesn't get old. I can sit here for hours and hours and catch bluegills, and I don't know why, but a big bluegill bite is one of my, I mean, it's just so fun. I love it. <laughs> I think mine took, oh God, they're in there thick, aren't they? <laughs> oh God, that one came out screaming. Is that a big one? That one looks big. When he jumped, he looked big. No, I don't know. He's not bad. <laughs> yeah. bigger than I thought. God, they just have backs on them. I know. Look at that. When you, when you start getting that. I know. Uh, oh, see that if you can see head. that. That's when you know they're getting big. They got big foreheads on them. That's an, that's an adult bluegill. God, so Pretty awesome. colors right it's now, so too. awesome. There is just something about going back to the basics. Oh, isn't it? Just watching a bobber go down. 